Hello, biologists. I'm Greg Kowalki. I've been teaching biology at Cleveland High School for six years now. Before that, I was a marine biologist. Uh, so today I get to tell you a little bit about how DNA codes for proteins. This was one of the most important discoveries in biology ever and has really changed the entire field. So I'm really excited to be able to tell you a little bit about this today and introduce you to these concepts. All right, so this lesson is lesson 2.3, DNA to protein. Before we get started, I'd like to remind you a little bit about uh, how to use these PowerPoints during distance learning. First of all, work at your own pace. Your health and your family come first. It's a good idea to work with a peer, talk to them about this, discuss this. These are big, heavy concepts. Make sure you understand them. It may also be a good idea to go back and review your learning tracking tool and make sure you understand previous lessons. This one builds a lot upon the vocabulary and the learning we've done before. Okay, let's jump in. After reviewing this PowerPoint, you should be able to explain how DNA is used to produce a protein and how proteins determine the traits we see. You should be able to explain how codons in the DNA code for amino acids that make up a protein. And you should be able to describe how a change in a nucleotide base in the DNA could change the protein produced. Okay, there's a lot of new words in there. There's a lot of words we just learned in the last unit or last lesson. We'll cover them again, but this is where we're going today. All right. In short, really the big thing from this lesson is that DNA codes for proteins and proteins determine traits. Okay. DNA is the code for proteins and proteins determine the traits. Today we're going to learn how that works. In a moment, I'm going to show you a video of a colleague of mine, Dr. Katz's daughter, Zoe, using beads to figure out how DNA codes for proteins. So watch this video and we'll return. Hi, Zoe. Hello. Hey, today we're, we're going to talk about how the instructions in your DNA help build your body by okay. making proteins. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to give you this piece of paper and this is going to be like your DNA. Can you uh -huh. tell me what you see? I see yellow, blue, purple, green, pink, orange, orange, and yellow. How do you know? Because of the first three letters on the, um, in the square. Okay, and so just those three letters tell you which color bead to add to your protein yeah. necklace. Okay, can you do it for us? Yeah. Have we talked before about how your body's made of proteins? Yeah. Yellow. Blue, purple, green, pink, orange, orange. Awesome. Can you show us your protein necklace? Yeah. Great. Do you know what those little pieces of protein are called? No. Those are amino acids. Yeah. You get them in your food. Pretty cool when you eat yeah. protein. Okay, so I'm going to give you a different part of DNA. Okay? Okay. Can you, can you look at this one for us? It says yellow, blue, purple, green, orange, 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 yellow. So, is it the same or different? It is different. So, is your necklace going to be the same or different? Different. Okay, let's look at that. Yellow. Blue. Purple. Green, orange, orange, 
And so now what do you have? A different necklace. Two different necklaces because they had different instructions. Yeah. All right. Isn't that cool? That's how your body builds all the parts of you. It does? Yeah. Wow. Go science! Put what we just saw Zoe do into context. Zoe got a series of instructions and used those instructions to put a string of colored beads on a string in a specific order. That string of beads represented a protein. Now thinking back to the animals unit, proteins are one of the four different types of organic molecules that all living things are made of. And if you remember, proteins are a polymer. They are made up of monomers called amino acids. Well, there are actually many different types of amino acids. There are 20 that are used commonly by life on Earth. And when these are put together, they make a protein. Well, amino acids act differently. Those 20 different amino acids do different things. So whenever a protein is made, it balls up. And because of the different properties of these different amino acids, some of those amino acids like to be close to each other. Some of them don't. Some of them like to be near water. Some of them don't like to be near water. They're either hydrophilic or hydrophobic. Some of them make bonds with each other. Some of them make bonds with different types of molecules. All of this means that enzyme, or, uh, proteins ball up into very specific shapes, which allow them to do the different types of things that we learned in the last lesson proteins do. Some of them are structural, like collagen. Some of them are carrier molecules, like hemoglobin carrying oxygen. Some of them are signals. Some of them receive those signals. Some of them act as gates in cell membranes to let some things in and keep some things out. And perhaps the most important group, some of them are enzymes, which means they help chemical reactions happen. Chemical reactions like the ones we learned about in the animals unit, like digestion, and biosynthesis, and cellular respiration, and even photosynthesis are all helped by enzymes. So the different types of proteins determined by the different order of amino acids do different things. All right, so let's do a quick review of what this all means. So let's put the video we just saw and the learning we just got in context with genetics and DNA. Where are the instructions for making a protein? Well, they're in the DNA. And think back to what you know about cells. That DNA is in the nucleus. What are the instructions for making proteins? DNA, and we're going to look a little bit more into how the nucleotides that make up the DNA polymer make these instructions. What did the list of colors represent? Well, the colors, that was the instructions in the DNA. Where are proteins made? Learn this back when we looked at cells. Think about which organelle makes proteins. I'm going to leave that one up to you. And what do the beads represent? Those are our amino acids that make up our proteins. So what Zoe just did is she got instructions and then used those instructions to put beads on a string in a specific order, which led to a very nice looking uh, necklace. Okay, this was a simulation of DNA being the instructions that codes for proteins and that those proteins determine the traits that an organism has. Okay, so DNA is the instructions that leads to the order of amino acids, the orders of the beads on the string, and those order of amino acids determines the shape of the protein and therefore what it does, which is the trait that you see in an organism. Okay, so to reiterate, the sequence of nucleotides that make up the DNA polymer are used as instructions to determine the order of amino acids and which amino acids make up a protein polymer those amino acids interact with each other in the protein to determine the shape of the protein, which determines 
the function of that protein, and the function of that protein determines the trait of the organism. This is how traits are determined by DNA. How does that work though? How can the sequence of the four different nucleotides, adenine, thiamine, cytosine, and guanine, determine which amino acid comes next in a protein? This is that huge discovery in the 50s by uh, a couple of uh, grad students named Watson and Crick really changed biology forever. Okay. And the way that we do it to figure it out, kind of our tool to look at a string of letters, a string of nucleotides in DNA, and determine what protein those particular strands of DNA code for, those genes, is by using a tool that we developed called the codon wheel, shown here. And that's, this is going to be one of the big skills you are going to learn in this lesson, is how to use the codon wheel. All right. As you can see with the codon wheel, we have a center circle here that has A, C, T, and G in it. Uh, those are our four nucleotides. Adenine is A, cytosine is C, thiamine is T, and guanine is G. Remember they go together to, to bring back to DNA synthesis and what we learned in the last le uh, lesson. Adenine pairs with thiamine, cytosine pairs with guanine. Okay. That's an important part, uh, but not going to be terribly important as we move forward. All right, so we're going to look at this wheel and figure out how to figure out what amino acid the codon, ATG, codes for. Okay, remember DNA is a code, okay? And a codon is three letters in a row that is the code for a specific amino acid, okay? So a codon is three letters that codes for a specific amino acid. And using the codon wheel, we can determine what amino acid those three letters codes for. I'm going to start with one called ATG. The codon is going to be for adenine, thiamine, guanine. We start at the center of the codon wheel and move outward to determine what amino acid that codes for. Okay. So in this case, we're starting at the center, A for adenine. So we start at A. We're going to just start in this quadrant now, this upper left quarter of our wheel. Then we go out to the next uh, the next circle of the wheel. Okay, so we're going to go from A, and if we had AA, we'd go to that one, AC, AG, so you're going to the ones that correspond to this quarter, but we're looking for ATG, so we go to T right here. Okay, and then G is our last letter, our last nucleotide in our codon, so we go out and we look for the G here. So, a, T, G, all right, as we move from the center out a wheel for every letter, A, T, G, okay, and then the, the next wheel out, the fourth wheel on a codon wheel, is the name of the amino acid. In this case, it's methionine, okay, so we can tell that the codon, A, T, G, adenine, thiamine, guanine, is the code to tell the ribosomes in the cell to add a methionine amino acid next while making the protein. So A, T, G means methionine is the next amino acid while biosynthesizing that protein. We started here with a methionine for a specific reason. Methionine is usually the first amino acid in every protein. It's kind of the signal to start making a protein. Okay. So just keep that in mind that almost every protein and every protein you're going to make here starts with methionine. A codon is three nucleotides in a row on a strand of DNA 
on a chromosome that determine the next amino acid while biosynthesizing a protein. Okay, so a codon is the code for a specific amino acid. So it is a three-letter code, a three-nucleotide code that determines a specific amino acid. If you'll notice, looking at the codon wheel, some three-letter codes, some codons, code for the same amino acid. So for example, if you take a look at, let's say, CCT. Started in the center with C, and go out a le level to the next circle, and there's that other C, and then we said G. So in the third circle out from the center, you have G, which in the fourth circle out from the center means that that codes for the amino acid proline. But also notice that for proline, CCC codes for protein, for proline. CCT codes for proline. Many codes code for the same amino acid. And this actually comes back to some really cool kind of mathematical reasons for the reason why there are three letters for the code. On life on Earth, there are 20 different amino acids that are coded for by DNA. And in life on Earth, we use four nucleotides, A, T, C, and G, in DNA to code for the amino acids and proteins. Well, if it uses two letters, if it uses two nucleotides to determine a amino acid, it could only possibly have 16 different combinations. So if there were only two letters, there is no way to code for all 20 amino acids. So you use three letters. With four different letters, that is 64 possible combinations of letters, which is many more than 20. So there is some overlap. Some codons code for more the same amino acid. And this actually is, is mathematical. It's like three is the smallest number of nucleotides that you can use to code for 20 amino acids. All right, so just notice that. So the sequence of nucleotides in a strand of DNA is the sequence of codons, and those codons determine which amino acid is put into the sequence of amino acids that make a protein and that sequence of amino acids in that protein determines what that protein does. All right, we know a little bit more about DNA and proteins and how the sequence of nucleotides in DNA determines the order of amino acids in a protein, which as we know can lead to traits. So let's practice using the codons uh, wheel. This is one of the big skills we're learning in this lesson. So we have a codon wheel here, and we have a sequence of DNA in a gene on a chromosome here up at the top. Okay? So using the codon wheel, grab a scrap sheet of paper and a pencil, figure out what are the orders, what are the amino acids determined by this string of DNA. The things I'll, I'll let you know is I like to use the three-letter code above the name of each amino acid. So coming back to methionine here, it says MET above it. That's what I would write instead of writing out methionine each time. Proteins can be thousands and tens of thousands of amino acids long, and consequently writing them all out is, is a pain. So just go with the first three letters, all right? So grab a scrap of sheet, paid up per, and a pencil, give it a try, pause the video, we'll check your work in just a moment. Okay, what'd you get? Uh, let's take a look. So ATG, we've done that before. ATG is methionine. All right, so let's look at the next one. CGA, starting from the center, C, next uh, circle out, G, next circle out, A, that's arginine. So ARG. So if we wrote them out, this is our protein. Methionine, next one is arginine, tyrosine, alanine, lysine, and then that last one, the TAG, you hit one that said stop. 
This is not an amino acid. This is actually a specific codon that tells the ribosome to stop making the protein. So that it's not just making proteins you know, that are millions and millions and millions of amino acids long. So it gets a stop codon. So once you get a stop codon, whenever you're using a codon wheel, just stop. That's the end of the protein. All right, how'd you do? Okay, let's, uh, let's try another way of doing this. Let's look at what happens if we change a letter in this sequence. Okay, so in our previous sequence, that was a G. And let's change that to a T. All right, we're going to talk a lot more about how the letters in a sequence of DNA can change. We'll get to that later. I think you can probably already start figuring out what's going on here. Okay, so find out, take a look at your codon wheel. Here we go. And figure out what has changed. What has uh, changed in the amino acid sequence. So pause again. Give it a try. Let's see what's going on. Transcribe this sequence of amino acids. All right, what'd you do? So for me, I got methionine, arginine, tyrosine, serine, lysine, and then the stop. So we changed from, by changing that one letter, we changed from an alanine amino acid in our protein to a serine amino acid in that protein. So what does that mean? Well, the first one, methionine, arginine, tyrosine, alanine, lysine, that protein with that order of amino acids makes for this shape down at the bottom on the left. You notice that there is, uh, it makes a specific shape. The blues like to be near each other, and so it makes it into kind of almost a pac pan shape. Whereas with the protein from our second sequence, where we replace that G with a T, we now have methionine, arginine, tyrosine, serine, lysine, and that makes for the protein on the right, down at the bottom. We now have a yellow one instead of a blue one, and we have a different shaped protein. Think back to the last lesson. What could be the problem with different shaped proteins? Think about the Pac-Man and then the complete circle. There is a worksheet for you to practice using the code on wheel uh, posted online. Take a look at that, give it some practice. If you do not have a printer, just write down your answers as you look at it online. Okay, so let's go back to our initial questions and check your understanding. Make sure you learned what you needed to do in this lesson. Can you explain how DNA is used to produce a protein? and how proteins determine the traits we see. Can you explain how codons in the DNA have the code for the amino acids that make up a protein? Can you describe how a single change in a nucleotide base in the sequence of letters in the DNA could change the protein that can be produced? Think about this, review this, review some of the extra materials practiced with the uh, worksheet provided. And once you've done all that, please complete the DNA to protein exit ticket, which should be pro uh, provided to you online. And then after all of that, make an entry into your learning tracking tool titled 2.3 DNA to protein. Explain what we've learned and how that helps us understand how a disease can be passed down from generation to generation. And of course, any questions you still have left. Thank you very much for your attention. I'll talk to you soon in a lesson, two or three down the way. Uh, do good work, ask questions to your teacher, be safe, be well, and be great biologists. Thank you.